All right. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? So uh, I'm delighted to be doing the State of the State. And what I love about this is uh, a few things. First of all, it gives me a chance to, to converse with a whole bunch of you about the interesting work that you're doing. I also love that even after more than 30 years in this business, I continue to see examples of things that I've never seen done with GIS before, and that's really exciting. And finally, I think it's, it's great that uh, the great range and richness of things that you guys are all doing with GIS makes it uh, evident that this is really a great state, a great place to be practicing uh, the art of GIS. It's just so much good stuff going on. And I, I think the state of the state helps us all realize how much good work we're collectively doing. So what, what I've done here, you probably know that we've put the call out for examples, and 115 of you have responded, which is wonderful. Um, I had to do a little bit of uh, reformatting, mostly with your descriptions. Very few of you know how to write a brief description, especially you academics out there. Tisk, tisk. Um, we're going to post the whole presentation on the association website. It'll have the authors and their email addresses and uh, the descriptions all on, the, on there, so you can have that after the event here. Uh, as we go through, I'm just showing them in the order I received them. I used to put these in, you know, in little groupings of local government, private sector, state, federal, and so forth. But I thought it'd be more fun, a little more random, uh, to uh, keep your attention going uh, just in the order I got them. You're going to see uh, we have 17 examples that were nominated for GIS Association GIS Application Awards. Those awards are going to be presented this, uh, late this afternoon at the awards ceremony. So I don't know yet which of the 17 are going to win, but you're going to see those highlighted. And I've also taken the liberty of picking out six of my favorite examples. And at the end of this thing, we're going to do a little applause meter polling and just kind of pick out the audience favorite. Uh, the winner gets absolutely nothing but the warm glow of satisfaction knowing that we pick up the audience favorite. So let's get into it. All right, so our first example is from uh, Tioga County. Bill Ostrander sent me this within an hour of my first call. It's a septic system review application to show the environmental factors to come into a septic review. Uh, Development Authority of the North Country, uh, Dave Smith sent me this. This is a fire hydrant inventory in the village of Ogdensburg. Uh, Star Carter, also the Development Authority of the North Country, pretty much dared me to include this example. She's out in the field doing data collection for a fiber optic build project and they needed all the utility pole locations GPS. <laughs> we have here in the uh, town of Southampton on Long Island in Suffolk County. Southampton has a history going back to 1640 and they built this historic resources application. Uh, this is one of the award nominees, so for all you history buffs, you can find all the neat things that have gone on in the uh, town of Southampton. An uh, organization called Great Ecology has done some uh, climate resiliency model. This is basically sea level rise analysis for the village of Stony Point on the Hudson River. This is an example from New York City Department of Environmental Protection, their water quality in the New York Harbor monitoring project. Those 89 points are sampling sites. They collect data in the harbor uh, every week uh, during the warm weather months, and they're looking at long-term trends in water quality in the New York Harbor. Todd Bobosi, Capital Region Planning Commission, sent me this. This is very interesting. So he did a separate greenhouse gas analysis for transportation, and then one for household emissions, and this is the composite of the two. And what I find kind of fascinating here is that those of you that are nature lovers and live far out in the countryside, are actually doing the most to destroy it. <laughs> the uh, Onondaga County Water Authority uh, uh, had some summer aids out GPSing valves, hydrants, and infrastructure on their water system. One of our sponsors, uh, Latitude Geographics, uh, provided this example of an uh, application interface for building uh, an emergency response uh, information sharing tool. Ontario County, this is pretty interesting. They've got a community partnership project where they provide the GIS resources for community volunteers to add data to the county's data sets. They had one community group mapping historic barns, another mapping fire hydrants, and a third mapping World War I veteran gravestones. In Ulster County, they've got this new uh, reconnect site. It's a responsive application. It's both a website and a mobile app to make it easy to filter and find recre outdoor recreation opportunities in Ulster County. This one's from uh, Juliana Monte, who's a CUNY professor. Uh, you won't recognize the geography, that's the country of Scotland. Uh, I read her description over and over again, but my brain is not big enough and I could not understand what she's describing here. But what I think is interesting is that she's got a, a two-variable display here. So 
the coral cliff color coding is one variable, and then the 3D extrusion height uh, was representing as another independent variable on this map. Uh, Julia, uh, not Julia, uh, Julie Tolar from the uh, Rochester Regional Transit Service sent me this example. This is a, a bus ridership analysis. They're looking at uh, patterns at the a ridership at the bus stops to see if they can eliminate any stops on their system. Eric Kerman at the Troy Authority shows this example. This is a linkage of GIS to their asset management system. So you can see things like the condition of bridge decks and their uh, ratings over time. You can see the rate of deterioration over time. Um, this open sewer atlas project uh, is a project to expose some of the transparent underground infrastructure in New York City for that massive sewer system. Uh, the State GIS Program Office provided this example. They gathered the parcel data from all 62 counties and teased out all the state-owned land parcels. So as far as I know, this is the first real parcel-based uh, full set of state lands uh, that we now have that's freely available. Also from the GIS Program Office, these are regional consortia that counties are entering into to modernize their emergency radio communication systems. And you can see that some counties are participating in multiple regional consortia. Um, the New York City uh, Department of Planning has uh, launched this application. This allows you at the neighborhood level to retrieve all the relevant census demographic data much more easily than the census sites allow. Uh, Rochester, City of Rochester built this mobile application in conjunction with the fire department. And this is for tracking the condition of vacant buildings in the city of Rochester. This example is from uh, Don Allen, a rabid Buffalo Bills fan at, at the MRB group, although he was quick to disavow that the MRB group had anything to do with this. And this is an example of what happens when you combine about $100 worth of spray paint and a friend with a drone. And I'm imagining there may have been a little beer involved as well. Uh, Binghamton University has launched this new uh, campus interactive web map. It's pretty nice. Uh, the buildings have links to the floor plans, there are street view images, all the eateries, sporting events, facilities, and so forth around the campus, all interactively available. Uh, there's a project in New Jersey to create a new uh, interactive zoning map for Jersey City. Here's one I hadn't seen before. Bo Tulo from the FAA sent me this. This is the uh, the airspace restrictions around New York's Air Harbor. That's a term I hadn't ever heard used before, but apparently if you're in the airspace world, that's the way they describe these. Uh, I kind of like this example. This is from the GIS program office, the folks that manage the state of water imagery program. This is an example of the pixels from an ortho image have each been assigned the uh, elevation value from a LiDAR point cloud. So you end up with a 3D spinnable, movable uh, aerial ortho. Uh, here's one of my faves. This is from the uh, New York Public Library. They've uh, been doing uh, a new database of photographers whose work is exhibited in museums, libraries, and institutions across the U.S. And for each entry in the database, they have where the photographer was born, where they took their photos, and where they died. And this particular example is from uh, a, a, a Mercury uh, astronaut who uh, took photos in space. You can see where he was born in the middle of the country. He took his space photos and he retired and died in Southern California. Um, another example here from uh, Watkins Glen. These are ghost racetracks. These are the places where they used to conduct the auto racing on the streets in Watkins Glen, New York. Uh, here we have an example showing uh, catchment areas and stream network discharge uh, for a portion of the Catskills. Uh, Tao Tang and his students at uh, Buffalo State College gave me this. He's got students using drones and some remote sensing techniques to map invasive species. Uh, the New York State Department of State has this award-winning nominee. This is called the uh, Geographic Information Gateway, produced by Stone Environmental, another one of our sponsors here today. And this is a, a great site with a rich amount of uh, data and resources to understand our coastal environment, with things like featured stories on what are the offshore canyons, and what do those mean? How do they operate? Uh, Bob Scardamalia, the retired state demographer, gave me this example. He's uh, doing some work for uh, the Federal Department of Homeland Security. These are targeted employment areas in New York City. Uh, Rockland County, they've had for years an, an emergency evacuation system uh, related to the Indian Point nuclear power plant. 
Uh, that assumed that you were going to be at your home residential address uh, for you to know your evacuation protocols. This is a mobile app, so knowing where you are by the GPS in your mobile device, it can tell you where the nearest evacuation route is, shelter area, and where to get emergency information. Uh, Jim Mao, a professor at UAlbany, uh, has been doing something pretty interesting over the last few years. He's been writing software that mimics the style of hand-drawn hill shading that uh, used to be popular by the Swiss cartographers back in the hand-drawn cartography era. So this is a couple of hill shades generated with his software. Um, here's from, from Division of Military and Naval Affairs. Stu Galloway sent me this. This is uh, the, uh, the potential ricochet discharge area from a live fire proposed uh, rifle range. Uh, some students at Monroe County Community College have done some uh, uh, remote sensing analysis in forest lands uh, near the Finger Lakes. DEC's Bureau of Marine Resources provided this. This is some bathymetric data targeting spots uh, suitable for artificial reef placement. Uh, Colin Riley and his team at New York City do it. Uh, built this as an open source project. This is a pre-K finder, so you can find the nearest pre-K services near your home, office, or any other location in the city. Vision Maker NYC is a product of the Wildlife Conservation Society, and they're looking for citizen input on uh, sustainability design ideas going forward. And here we have um, another campus map. Uh, this is from um, Oh my gosh, I forgot which campus this is. That's awful. Uh, at any rate, it's another uh, beautiful interactive campus map with links to uh, building footprints. It's Buffalo, I'm sorry, thank you. All right, now the uh, DPW manager at the city of Elmira sent me an email apologizing that he didn't think he had anything worthy to include in the state of the state because all he does is quote vanilla examples of GIS. So he gave me these, and this, these are wonderful because he's actually, here's a small, uh, Central New York City, and he's using GIS on a daily basis for things like parade routes, sidewalk maintenance, uh, some community events that are happening. So I think that's really wonderful and absolutely belongs in the state of the state. A city of Ithaca did something neat. They applied for and got uh, Google to loan them their Street View camera gear backpack mounted, and they took it through the gorges and parks uh, in the city of Ithaca. And that data is now up on, in Google, so you can browse that as street view imagery in Google Earth and Google Maps. Uh, Bill Logis with Info Group, you, uh, they have a data set available nationwide of household data. This is, a, this is a single zip code in Brooklyn, and there you see the 439 households in that uh, zip code where, grand, where there's at least one grandparent living in the household. Niagara County's got uh, their Department of Economic Development has a brownfields tracking site here. They've inventoried all of their brownfield sites and their status with environmental remediation and redevelopment plans. Suffolk County IT, this one is a little hard to see at this scale. This is actually intended to be plotted out on an E-sized plotter. They ran a marathon down there, and so you see the route of the marathon with mile points marked on it. Uh, the U.S. National Grid uh, is a grid system used in emergency activation that's shown on there, and they've also shaded the fire departments along the route. Um, Brooks & Brooks, a um, surveying company, uh, has been using GIS, integrating this uh, in the products that they provide to their clients, so here you see an example of data generated from one of their surveys as a GIS product. The um, State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation has this called CRIS, the Cultural Resource Information System. This was built by Fountain Spatial, another of our sponsors here today, and this is an award nominee for all you history buffs. This is the area where we're sitting in downtown Albany with all the historic buildings and places that are on the, on the National Register highlighted. And you can see that Albany has quite a bit for those of you with an interest in history. Um, AppGeo, another sponsor, uh, built this site for New York City's Department of Economic Development. This is showing building level uh, broadband availability in the commercial districts of uh, New York City. This particular one is one of my favorites. I think it's a quite beautiful site built by uh, Steve Romalewski at the CUNY Graduate Center. And this has 40 years of change analysis for Long Island. And it combines some really well done cartography linked to a rich variety, a variety of data. And that data is represented on some well executed uh, supplemental graphs and charts. 
this particular example is from DOT, uh, from the Accident Location Information System, where they do statistical analysis on accident reports and then tease out priority locations for further engineering work, and that's what you see uh, shown here in yellow. Dutchess County, uh, Bob Wills in the planning department sent me this as another award nominee. This is called a re referral identifier. So when there's a proposed project in Dutchess County, as you see in the, the blue footprint there, uh, they can determine which municipal and county entities are going to have to participate in the project review process. Uh, New York City Department of Education has this application called PUTES on the web. This is another award nominee. This is for det determining eligibility for transportation for the uh, public school system there. Uh, Suni Fredoni, one of the professors there, uh, sent me this example of a, a stream uh, watershed area clipped to a school district boundary to help school kids understand the concept of a watershed and stream network in a, in a familiar territory. I really like this one. This is from the New York State Museum. They've done some paleo-Indian research. That map point at the center is a quarry where they determined was the origin point for some stone cutting tools that paleo-Indians used. And those uh, cutting tools have been found at five other sites that they know originated from that original quarry. And they've taken these maps and converted them to buttons that you can wear. So it's wearable art GIS. I kind of like that. Um, AECOM, an engineering firm, has done some work to uh, map a, uh, a former uh, Superfund site uh, near uh, West Point, New York, on the Hudson River. I kind of like this one. This is uh, from Green Mountain College in Vermont. They sent me this. This is a cumulative output from all of the oil and gas fields in the United States. So they're color-coded by lifetime cumulative output. Um, Buffalo Computer Graphics uh, has uh, an award-nominated app here. This is called the Common Operating Picture, or COP Viewer, that's part of their emergency response software, DLAN. Uh, Jim McConnell and the New York City Department of Environmental, excuse me, uh, Office of Emergency Management, excuse me, uh, sent me this. This is from the Legionnaires uh, disease outbreak that happened just a few months ago in New York City, and the tracking they did of buildings and the ventilation systems where they had to be uh, cleaned and tested to, to free them up from Legionnaires' disease. Um, Al Eidner has been doing some work with the Federal uh, Department of Homeland Security on a secure channel for Homeland Security to share information with communities. And in this case, uh, secure information sharing along targeted rail corridors. Uh, the Sy Syracuse Metropolitan uh, Transportation Committee uh, generates this transportation atlas and it contains a number of nice maps generated from their GIS showing a variety of the analysis they're doing to manage the transportation network in Syracuse. Uh, Broome County Planning Department sent this. This is a hotspot mapping of burglaries over an eight month period in the um, city of Binghamton. The, uh, the governor's office here in New York has under, undertaken a rebranding, so all of the state agency logos that you may have known for many years, they've all been retired, and we're going to a common look and feel, so State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation has had to rebuild all of the official parks maps, and they've taken that opportunity to improve the look and feel. I think they've done some nice cartographic work here. This is the first one. It's in for Montauk Point on Long Island. Town of Pittsburgh, up near Rochester, has a Veterans War Memorial site with commemorative bricks. Each brick commemorates a veteran that uh, came from the town of Pittsburgh. The problem is it's hard to find your veteran, so they built this web app, and you can look up a veteran and find out which brick it's in. this case, uh, Lee Smith, a Vietnam War vet, is at brick L12. Um, here's something interesting, uh, something called a sh sewer shed analysis. I've never seen one of these before either. So these are the, uh, the land uses inside the uh, catchment area for a stormwater sewer and where it, where it drains out into the uh, harbor in Manhattan. Um, SUNY ESF sent me this example. I think we all know that with global warming, we're having a more rapid increase in, in warming temperatures in the spring. What I certainly hadn't appreciated was how variable that is. So you see that the rate of temperature increase in the spring uh, is quite inconsistent as we look around the state. That's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, George Davis from GeoWeb 3D sent me this. This is an example of a, a 3D visualization uh, for a homeland security type application. 
Uh, Open and Green Map is a global project. It's now active in 40 countries, and citizens can uh, code locations of all sorts of green sites uh, for enhancement of kind of the green lifestyle. Um, New York City, uh, excuse me, this is a CUNY uh, example. It's another viewer of uh, health data and demographic data uh, for the New York City area. Columbia University gave you this. This is a four different decade time slices of something called uh, the uh, floor area ratio for New York City. Um, got this from SUNY Geneseo. This is a, a, no, I'm sorry, this is New York State Ag and Markets looking at best practices for non-point source pollution management in a watershed area, in this case, the Genesee River Valley in uh, Western New York. This is a second example from the New York Public Library. I, I, I like this one quite well, too. What they've done is they've been scanning their historic map collection. For example, the Sanborn fire insurance maps from the early 1900s. The software is able to recognize the polygons and code them based on the color code, but they need humans to verify this. So this is a crowdsource application where you can check out a map, verify that the machine reading was done correctly. And I love the tagline here, kill time, make history. Uh, Smith College, this is another one of my faves. They had a, a website stood up where people that uh, were affiliated with the college could locate their favorite places on the campus. It may be a cl uh, classroom where they had a favorite course, it may have been a favorite dining hall or another spot that was meaningful to them in their life on the campus. What you see in the upper left is a hotspot map generated from data from alumni, and then the one on the lower right is, data, is generated from undergraduates, and you can see they vary quite a bit in what, what's their favorite spot on campus. Uh, Green Lake State Park has added a new trail marker system. Each trail marker has got a unique code on it, and they've converted each of these trail markers into an address point and loaded it into their 911 system. So if you're out hiking on the trails in Green Lake State Park and you break your ankle, you can call 911, give them the trail marker, and they know exactly where you are and can dispatch help to you immediately. Uh, Pictometry, one of our sponsors here today, has uh, upgraded their software, make it easier for you to bring in external data, in this case, parcel level data, uh, into their oblique imagery views. Um, this is an example from SUNY Geneseo uh, of a watershed analysis student project for the Genesee uh, River watershed. Uh, Jamapco is a local map publishing company uh, right here in Clifton Park, New York, and they uh, recently produced this website for Saratoga Springs Tourism Bureau showing all the tourist features in Saratoga Springs. Um, this particular example is from a company that has an application that integrates uh, Google Map data with uh, Esri ArcGIS uh, server data. The, um, let's see, who was this? This was, gosh, I'm stumbling here, sorry about that. This is DEC, I believe. They have the um, IMAP Invasives. This is a, a citizen scientist engagement project where you can download this mobile app and report the locations of invasive species that you see. Uh, Sharon Heller at the Tompkins County Planning Department just recently completed an update of their uh, countywide land use land cover data set. This actually originated in 1969, before some of you were born probably. Uh, it's one of the very first uh, digital land use land cover data sets. It's actually undergone four revisions. It's really wonderful to see a database that's, had, that's kind of a long life. Uh, New York uh, State Department of State sent me this. This is power generating facilities in the New York City area that were impacted by the Sandy Storm inundation and coded by the number of customers impacted from each of those power generating sites. Uh, bound management systems on Long Island uh, and sent me this. This is an example of a GIS application integrated with the 911 dispatch software. Uh, the town engineer in the town of Tonawanda, just outside of Buffalo, sent me this. I've never seen one of these before. This is a mowing plan for uh, green, green areas that the town uh, actively mows in the summertime. Uh, this is from uh, another uh, vendor that's produced an application to make it easier for broadband companies to determine their broadband expansion into unserved areas. I really like this one, town of Amherst, also a uh, suburb of Buffalo. They've made it easy for you to contest your property tax assessment. So you put in your property address and it finds the comparables that have the same neighborhood code, the same uh, square footage and building type. So you can easily see if, you're, if you agree with your tax assessment. 
uh, the the uh, development authority of the North Country uh, has offered a hosted application. Many of the communities up there are resource starved. This gives them a capability to uh, use a hosted GIS environment that, that DANK provides for those communities. The Adirondack Park Agency, is a, we have another citizen scientist engagement project. These are volunteers who are helping to track the status of wetlands inside the Adirondack Park. I kind of like this one as well from St. John's University. The, the students studying literature actually integrate GIS in there. So as they, as they find location references, uh, as they're looking at a particular author in one example, on this page, an author's diary, they've taken all the locations referenced in his diary and built a GIS map to supplement uh, the readings that they're doing for that author. That's kind of new, new and interesting. Uh, Julia O'Brien, Federal Emergency Management Agency, gave me this one on disability demographics that they have to build into their uh, uh, emergency recovery plans. Um, here's an interesting example of estimated building energy consumption by block in New York City. So you can see that the, the total energy consumption is highest in the areas of Midtown and Lower Manhattan where all the skyscrapers are. Uh, Bergman Associates generated this 3D visualization for the city of Olean in the southern tier uh, for a potential redevelopment of a brownfield site. Here's another CUNY example. They've been looking at this Newtown Creek, which is in Brooklyn. And Newtown Creek was the site 100 years ago of intense uh, chemical processing. And uh, the sites are long gone, but they're able to go back to old aerial photo. This is actually an aerial photo from 1924 and they're able to pinpoint some of the locations of those chemical facilities on Newtown Creek. The city also, City uh, Parks, does an annual tree census of the city street trees, and they've recently adopted a new measuring, uh, linear measuring method. The volunteers are trained to use a linear measuring wheel. They start at the corner of the block and uh, get, the, get the measurement from the start of the block to the tree. So now the census includes not only the count of the trees and the tree species, but the exact location on the curve for every tree in the city. Uh, here we have uh, a map of all the protected areas, uh, 31,000 parcels in total that have just been completed as part of a, an inventory of protected areas of the state. Uh, Genesee County sent me this. This is an example of another invasive species tracking. If you look at that inset at the bottom, this is the, uh, the black swallow wart, which I'll have to confess I had to look up in Google. It's, a, it's an invasive vine, for those of you that didn't know. Um, the Highlands County in New Jersey uh, has this interesting app where you point anywhere on the GIS map and it generates for you an automatically formatted PDF report uh, based on a map template and a series of database uh, report templates, so oh, just ready to insert in your report or print it out. Uh, Mohawk Valley GIS, Linda Rockwood and her small company created this. This is a, a snowmobile trail app, and uh, I think it's kind of interesting. So you could, for example, decide you want to take a snowmobile ride from near Rochester all the way to Old Forge, New York, and there is the, the snowmobile route that you can take without ever getting off your sled. And then you can download this track to your handheld GPS device and use it to navigate. Uh, Mike Naughton in the town of Huntington on uh, Nassau County sent me this. This is an example of a, a parking lot with the street lights and the wiring layout in that area. Um, here we have uh, an example of work that's being done for New York City uh, DEP to update the National Wetlands Inventory uh, using modern LIDAR and remote sensing data. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. I got a call from this gentleman. Uh, he's a retired educator. His name is John Sharon, who lives on Long Island. And he's frustrated that school kids in New York are not getting an adequate uh, education in the fundamentals of geography. So he created this, and he calls it MAPSL. It's a combination of map and puzzle. So he's targeting this to fourth graders, 10-year-olds. And for the area where they live, they can use his website and generate a mapsel. In this case, in the town of Oyster Bay, these are the villages and incorporated hamlets. And so they can kind of put the puzzle together and get an understanding of those geographic building blocks. That's some, something I'd never seen before. Here's another one of my faves. This is from the US Army Corps of Engineers, Buffalo Division. What you're actually looking at is a subterranean view. Those pinpoints coming down are test wells and where they've tested positive for radiological contamination 
Uh, they then connected the dots and built a 3D subterranean volume so they can estimate how much soil might be contaminated. He actually sent me a video. Um, you could spin it around, but I had to just collapse this into a single screen capture for this display. Uh, the Tug Hill Commission has 41 towns that they support here. One of the things they've done is generate new highway maps for all the towns uh, for things like snow plow tracking. Also in Tug Hill, they're building a, in cooperation with the towns, a natural resource inventory for the whole plateau area. Uh, Penny Wells Laval, the real property tax director in Suffolk County, sent me this. Uh, the way they are using GIS uh, in some of the products that go uh, through the, the formal review process. This is an example of a rather complex multi-story condominium project. Uh, DEC in their uh, Marine uh, Bureau uh, has this award-nominated app that makes it easier for people that are uh, updating the uh, shellfish inventory to uh, update the maps. And the, the uh, State Health Department is uh, looking at societal uh, factors uh, related to health uh, determinants, I think they call them. And here's one on uh, low birth weight prevalence uh, with some st statistical analysis of residuals, for example, in the bottom view. Um, New York City Parks and Recreation also sent me this one. This is an, uh, an area on Staten Island where there had been an oil spill in the early 90s and they've been tracking the impact of that, the natural recovery from that oil spill on the distribution of a certain species of marsh birds. So those are sighting locations of the marsh birds over a 20 year period. But this one will either make you happy or depress you. This is a, a map of uh, predicted life expectancy by census tract around the state. So I was happy to see that the area in Albany County where I live is bright green, which means I'm gonna live a long, healthy life. But I'm a little more concerned from some of you in, say, Utica, but I don't know, my friend Liz DiGeronimo, she might be sweating a little bit to see the, uh, the lower life expectancy there. Uh, we got from US Geological Survey, this is a map showing the, uh, the LIDAR collection that the feds are, are doing uh, this year and next year in New York State. Uh, Dave Jorgensen, one of the members of our Geospatial Advisory Council, uh, is with a, a nonprofit called Toxic Targeting. And this is a map of uh, all of the capped and abandoned oil and gas wells in the southern tier. I had no idea we had so many of them. It's quite, quite a dense distribution. At uh, SUNY Buffalo, they've been working for about 15 years on an open source software project called GeoWEP. This is for estimating uh, soil erosion from runoff. And it just uses variables like soil type, slope, and uh, estimated rainfall amount to predict where you're gonna get soil erosion. Uh, an organization called the Climate Institute sent me these. You're not going to rec recognize the area. This is a two-county area in Alabama uh, showing a variety of factors being analyzed uh, for a climate change analysis there. Uh, CDM Smith, an engineering company, sent me this as a site plan for a sewage treatment plant on Long Island in Nassau County with uh, uh, potential flooding from a high rainwater event. We got this from Erie County. This is interesting. They have a call before you dig application. And they used to need nine staff in the county office to review all the permit requests for digging. Uh, they've since converted to a GIS application, which has been nominated for an award. And they've got all of their buried uh, sewer and water distribution infrastructure as part of this GIS application. And they now do the same review with four staff rather than nine. Uh, I like this one, and it's also a, a, an award nominee. This is a, a crowdsourced roadkill reporting app. <laughs> um, and uh, what I like about it is Danielle Garneau from SUNY Plattsburgh, in her description, she said, she described it as wildlife sightings typically deceased along the roadways. <laughs> All right. Uh, another award nominee from uh, town of uh, Southampton, again in Suffolk County. This is something called the land manager application. And land manager provides access to building permits, uh, to property tax assessment, and 90 other layers of data that they have uh, for municipal officials to review uh, information at the parcel level. Um, Sam Weir and the Westchester County GIS team has an award nominated app for doing, it's a mobile app for doing a uh, sign uh, inventory. And so here you see the, uh, a little bit of a, uh, some of the data that came from that sign inventory collection. And Paula Cutrone from the uh, Onondaga County uh, Crime Analysis Center sent me this. This is uh, redlined areas in the city of Syracuse where there's been incidences of shooting that they need to uh, 
ramp up their uh, enforcement on. That's the 115 slides. I added this one at the end here just to kind of summarize. This is a shot taken less than two weeks ago, Saturday night, October 17th. This was taken by a Russian cosmonaut aboard the International Space Station, and it's a nighttime shot over uh, New York City. You can see the, uh, the midtown Manhattan area around Times Square is brightly lit. Those are all lights coming off the billboards and you know, street lights, all the activity there. And what's interesting to me is that this is no longer even really remarkable to us to see these kinds of images from space. But if you think about it, we've only been able to do this for about 50 years. I've got in the inset in the upper right is the, the iconic blue marble photo that was taken on the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. And really, the ability to, for us to see our planet as a single place from space changed our view of the world. It really made it evident to many people that this is a small place that we have to work together to solve our problems. And as you've seen from the 115 examples, we're all using GIS as like another, another way to expose the factors that are influencing problems and issues that we need to solve on our planet. And I take great encouragement from the, from the richness of examples I've seen that we're going to use this technology to help make the world a better place. And with that, I thank you. And we're going to do our, um, our applause meter polling. I've got six examples. I'll just show them to you again real quick, and we're going to, we're going to take applause and see who's your audience favorite. So we've got the one from the public library on uh, uh, photographers. We've got the uh, Long Island change analysis from SUNY graduate. We've got the, uh, the Paleo-Indian wearable art from the State Museum, the Smith College favorite places, and the, uh, the underground contamination. Uh, and so, oops, and one more, and of course the roadkill. So let's, uh, let's see how, who likes what. So let's hear applause for the Public Library Act. All right. How about for Long Island change? I hope, I hope we get more variation here. It's going to be hard to decide. How about the wearable art? Okay. Smith College favorite places? Uh -oh, a little tepid Smith College. I think you drop. And how about the, uh, the underground uh, 3D view? And roadkill. Where's Eileen Allen? Eileen, you in here? There she is. Eileen is a colleague of uh, Danielle uh, uh, Garneau, who uh, worked on this app. So you can pass along to Danielle that you guys have the audience favorite. <laughs> All right. And uh, thank you very much. That wraps it up. With any luck, there's food outside. Go 